Previously, we discussed the structure of a glycerophospholipid, and now I want to talk about how we make them. So here's a glycerophospholipid with its glycerol backbone, its two acyl groups, and its polar head group that includes a phosphate group. This, is, this whole thing is often called a phosphoalcohol. So of course, this, this whole portion is the polar head group that we talk about and mention when we talk about um, glycerophospholipids. So the question is, how are these things made? There are four steps. The first thing that we do is we form the glycerol backbone, similar to the, what we did with the triglycerides. The second thing we do is we're going to attach these fatty acyl groups via those ester linkages. All right, these ester linkages here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the polar head group. via phospho, phosphodiester linkages, right, right there and right there. Okay. And the fourth and final step is we're going to alter the head group to yield the final product, and that's if necessary. This isn't always a necessary step. It may or may not be. Okay. So let's kind of get an overview of what that might look like here. The first thing that we're going to do is form glycerol 3 phosphate, which is what we saw earlier with triglycerides. This is basically going to be our backbone, right? So, this first step here, this first step here is making our backbone. And we get this glycerol 3 phosphate from dihydroxyacetone phosphate or glycerol. Once we have glycerol 3 phosphate, we want to take that to form phosphatidate. How did we do that when we made triglycerides? Well, we just had acyl transferases basically add acyl groups. And that's what happens here as well. We take acyl transferases to make those ester linkages to those acyl groups. Then we have phosphatidate. That's the common precursor. Once we have that, we want to add our polar head group, specifically by adding an alcohol of some sort to this phosphate group that's already here in phosphatidate. So we have an alcohol group here. So that's going to be the addition of the polar head group, of course, the the phosphodiester bonds are um, going to be there. Um, and then we basically have a glycerol phospholipid. So really, it's only three steps that are absolutely necessary. But there are some cases in which the, the last step, the modification of that head group, is important to yield the final product, the final glycerol phospholipid. So something might be changed slightly. And we'll see more details about that later in this series. One thing I do want to mention even though that pretty much completes the introduction, is that we can also get phosphatidate from another molecule. It could come from this molecule, diacylglycerol. If we have diacylglycerol, what we can do is basically um, all, we, all we really would need to do is add a phosphate group to replace this OH here, right, to get phosphatidate. And that's what we do. We just um, we add a kinase, and we basically invest some ATP here to give us phosphatidate from diacylglycerol, and the, the steps that follow can occur as well to give us our glycerol phospholipid, and modifications, of course, can give us our final product if necessary. So that's sort of the overview of how to make a glycerol phospholipid. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching.